How I decorated my glasses with some 3D flowers acrylic nailer tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys! So in today's video I am going to be doing something not nail art but using nail art techniques and nail art products like I have done a couple times in the past and everyone seems to like it. So I thought I would just continue on that path. So this one is going to be doing these glasses. So they started out completely clear and so I thought that was utterly boring and I wanted to jazz them up a little bit. And so I added some mirror powder that, well it's not really mirror, it's more like a iridescent mermaid type powder all over them so they kind of go from teal to purple and in my room with my indoor lighting you cannot tell at all but outside in the great wilderness which normally I would show you but it's completely freezing outside um they look amazing they are iridescent and they just show off all these different colors and so then I also because just doing one thing is clearly not enough I added all kinds of little flowers going around the edge and then down the bow so there's six flowers on each side and if you wanted if you plan on doing this you could definitely tone down the amount of flowers you could do just one side I know my dad thought that doing one side would be the way to go instead of having them be symmetrical but I was feeling the symmetry so I decided going with both sides was my route to take and I like having the flowers just right around this edge but I know that another style that you see a lot of times is just to go around the top edge so that I mean there's all different styles that you want to go with that you could try but this is just to do the flowers on the glasses so I hope you like that and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well so the first thing I did, which I later decided was utterly unnecessary, is that I wrapped the bows in some saran wrap so that while I worked on the front of the frames, I won't get any product on them. But I decided that I'm really not that messy and that I wasn't going to get product on them anyway. So just ignore that step because it's more annoying than anything. So the first thing you want to do is to make that mirror powder background. I put on a layer of some um, no wipe gel top coat just over the clear frames and I didn't do the inside of the frames but pretty much everywhere else and I just started on the front so then I'm going to be burnishing in some of that uh, chameleon powder I looked it up and I figured out what it was that I was actually talking about chameleon powder that is purple to teal all over the frames and I know that I'm getting some of this powder on my lenses that's pretty much inevitable you can clean it off and so I did each of these in like a section. So I worked and I finished the front of the frames first and then I started doing the side or the bows just because I didn't want to, after I have that gel top coat on there, I didn't really want to be touching it. I don't know if that would really make much of a difference, but I figured having oils and stuff for my hands on there probably wouldn't be best or lint or cat hair, who knows what. So I just did the front. Um, so just like around the lenses there. So then after I have all of that mermaid powder in, I grabbed a little lint-free pad and I just am cleaning off any excess dust. Although on the lenses, it pretty much stayed and there was no getting rid of it. So then I'm going to take some more of that top coat and I'm just going to cover up that mermaid powder. I guess I'm calling it mermaid powder. And I'm just going to make sure that that is nice and set, not going to wear off or anything. So just another coat of that thin coat and make sure I'm covering everything and not touching it as I'm doing this. And so just put that over, cure that again. And so, yeah. And if you have a a lamp that doesn't have a bottom in it so it's easier to set the glasses in there. I would highly recommend using that one because otherwise it might be hard to get them in. So now I'm going to be cleaning the lenses and this is going to get rid of that powder and fingerprints because I was touching them a bunch um, just with some eyeglass cleaner and a little cleaner towel thing. And so now I have the bows and the front of the frames done. I didn't show doing the bows because it's the same process so you got that. So now on a nail form backing, I'm going to take and I have two tone beads to make my flower petals. And so this actually isn't a nail form backing. This is as per a subscriber's recommendation, which I was loving the idea. It's the little backing from a packing slip that I got from a product that I got in the mail. So when they always have that return label that's on a sticker, then I just got rid of the return label because I'm keeping this. I don't remember even what it was, but I'm keeping it. And so I was able to use that. And so to make my flower petals for the first flower, I took a bead and I have this really pretty, it's not quite opaque, but it's like a sparkly white and then a really rich purple. So I did first into the sparkly white and then into the purple and that's how I made my two-tone flower petals. And I know if you missed, if you just saw that all of a sudden one of the petals disappeared, I decided that one was too big so I just tossed it. Um, so for the first three, they're all fairly large. So they're pretty much, that one was larger than I needed the large petals to be but they're a decent size and so I'm going to make those and I don't like ever having just one petal on in the works at a time because it takes 
far longer than I really want it to. So I like to have more than one going at the same time. So I'm just going to keep adding them as I'm going just here and there, add another petal to make sure that the whole process is still moving and I don't really have much stagnant time. So for the first flower, this purple and white one, I am going to be doing three rows of three petals. So this is the second row that I'm working on now that I just set those two in there. And so for those, because I'm doing three rows of three, as you get each row of petals needs to get just a touch smaller. So when you do something like that, I, the way I like to make sure that my petals get increasingly smaller or increasingly larger or anything, not just petals, I really monitor the amount of monomer that's in my brush and how I'm tapping off the brush. So for the larger petals, I just did one little tap on the side of my Dappen dish to get rid of excess liquid. For the second petals, I did a little like a half swipe off the back of my brush to get rid of excess liquid. And for the smallest ones, I did a full swipe off the back of my brush to get rid of the excess liquid. So I hope all that makes sense. And you know, you can do it your own way. That's just mine. So these are the last few petals that I'm going to put in there. And as you can see, I'm using some silicone tools to help me pick them up and place them and just make sure they're all in there. So then after I have all my petals where I like them, I'm going to take and put a little bit of clear acrylic in the center of the flower and then put in three little silver rhinestones. And that last one, I had a lot of trouble catching. It was a little wily devil. It was escaping. It was running away. It did not want to be part of this flower, but I caught it. It's, it's all good. So then I'm just going to take and with more of that clear acrylic, I'm going to be filling in all around that flower because those petals are extremely thin. They're extremely delicate and kind of like a potato chip. So you don't want to have them just so brittle. So if you put acrylic underneath wherever you can get some clear acrylic under them, it's going to add so much strength and it's going to make them last because otherwise they just wouldn't. So now I'm going to be making two flowers that go around this first one. The first, or they're both going to be the same sparkly white, but also with a light blue. And so instead of the first flower, I made it where it was the darker color in the center with the white on the edges. This one, I'm going to be doing the white in the center with the darker color on the edges. And so this is the only these two flowers here, the one that's going on either side of this purple one, are the only two that I did it with the color on the outside. And so I'm not, I didn't videotape doing the flowers on the bows. I didn't, I, you know, it's all kinds of making flowers. It's the same process. It's the same technique, just changing the color a little bit. So I figured it wasn't necessary. So the other two flowers or the other three flowers that are on the bow, that's two more colors. One of them was a darker teal. And that was the first one I did. That was the largest flower on the bow. And then going down towards my ear, the next one was more of an orchid pinky purple color. That's really nice and light. And then the last flower that's was really on the smaller side, the smallest one on the glasses was a, um, the same purple as this one. So for the rest of the flowers, besides that first purple one, I just did two rows of three petals. So that's what I'm doing here. And for these blue ones, I did the same process with the clear acrylic in the center to add the rhinestone. But instead of adding three, like the first flower, I just added two or just, just one, just one, just one rhinestone in the center. And this time I used a teal rhinestone instead. And for all of these flowers, you can see that I'm picking up the acrylic and I'm touching it when it's not quite uh, set with my fingers. I probably won't recommend doing that. You don't really want to get monomer on your skin. I just, I don't know. I was not really thinking. Um, so if you're going to do that, if you do want to use your hands, I would recommend wearing a pair of gloves. Just to prevent getting monomer on your skin. So then I'm going to be adding a couple larger rhinestones around those three. Just, I put three rhinestones, one next to each flower. Uh, the two next to the blue flowers were silver and the one next to the purple was a really pretty teal color. The same color that I put in the center of the other two blue flowers, just it's a larger one. And so there we have that. And then I'm going to be outlining the edges of my flowers with just a relatively dry bit of diluted white paint. And I the brush is relatively dry, the paint is diluted because diluted and dry with paint don't really go together at all. But yeah, the brush is dry, the paint's diluted, just going along the edges of the petals just to really brighten them and make them easier to see. And I didn't feel it was necessary to add any sort of top coat on top of it because I didn't, I'm not going to be washing my hands. It's not like the paint is really going to have an opportunity to wear off too much. The biggest chance is if you wash your glasses, but I know just to be cautious with these pair and not get any of the cleaning solvent or solution on the flowers, which I probably would try to avoid regardless of worrying about the paint. So I didn't figure it was necessary. Plus that really, sometimes adding a top coat on top of 3D kind of gets rid of the 3D part of it. So I didn't want to do that either. So after I have that, and as um, I put the ones on the bows too, 
at this time. And so I used the same process for each side and that is it. And these glasses started out, like I said, completely clear and I like this version so much better. And I hope you do too. And please share any recreations with me, whatever you do to your glasses, I don't care, on Facebook or Instagram. I love seeing artsy stuff like that and I will see you in my next video. Bye!